Note, this video is part of a larger series on speed solving the FTO. Click the playlist link in the description to see the rest of the videos. So I'm making this video as an addendum to the last bottom triple step. There are some new algorithm sets that Ed and I have developed for this part of the solution, one of which gives a nice way to solve the trapped triangles case that comes up sometimes, and another which allows you to influence your case for last three triples. And I will be going over both of these in this video. All right, so now let's talk about trapped triangles. This is the case where two of your bottom triangles for your triple are both stuck in this bottom slot here. And as a result, we are unable to finish our last bottom triple on just these top layer pieces. Normally, the way we would have to solve this is to bring both of these triangles up to the top with a four move insertion like this, and then we would be able to finish from there. However, there's been a new discovery about a way to solve this case. If we take a look at our bottom slot here, noting that since these two trapped triangles are going to be the same color, one of them is actually going to be solved in this bottom slot. And so in reality, we only have these two pieces to solve, the corner piece and the other bottom triangle. So this suggests that if we can find a way to just insert just those two pieces into this slot easily, then it'll allow us to solve this case much faster. And it turns out there is. If anything, this is less of an algorithm set and more of a trick. It's incredibly simple and can be implemented almost instantly. All we have to do is first form one pair with the other triangle color that we need, and then with a simple six move sequence, we can solve our last bottom triple like that. Isn't that cool? So this really makes dealing with these cases much nicer, and now I'm gonna go through how it works. So there are four cases in total for this, depending on where your pair that you do have is located and the orientation of your corner piece. So as an example, we first wanna make a pair with our corner. So if I do a U prime, then I form this pair right here. So we do need to make sure that we have one pair already done. And we have that trap triangle situation on the bottom. So here's the first type of case. We already have our pair done and it is on the interface between the top and middle layer like this. So we wanna face this pair so it's directly towards us like this. And here the bottom sticker is on the R face as you can see. So to solve this case, what we do is we make sure that our bottom slot is at the bottom left of this pair, sort of like if we were just going to insert the triple normally, if it were done, right? So to solve this, what we do is a BL prime move like this, and that brings up this corner and this triangle slot into this top layer here. Then we wanna do an inverse hedge, so that's B prime, R, B, R prime. As you can see, that puts in that corner in that triangle. And then finally a BL to bring it back down. And as you can see, that solves our last bottom triple. Here is the second case. You can see that again, we have the similar situation. This pair is done, but now our bottom sticker is on the L face like this. For this, what we wanna actually do is take that bottom slot and put it in the very back, away from us. The solution for this is extremely similar, except we do a BL as our first move instead of a BL prime. So if we do a BL, and that now sets up the two pieces, and then we do an inverse hedge, and then BL prime to finish. And as you can see, that solved our triple. So those are the cases where we form our pair within the interface here, and now there's two other ones that can come up. So here's the other type of situation we can have. It's where our pair is actually already formed on this top layer like this. Now for trap triangle cases like this, you should really only use these algorithms if you just automatically happen to have this pair done when you finished your last two centers, because otherwise you would just be able to turn this top layer until you form this pair here, and then it's one of those previous two algorithms. So instead of flipping this pair to the bottom and then doing that, there's actually other sequences that we can use that are a little bit faster. For these cases, what we want to do is we want to rotate the top layer so that this top pair that we have is in the back right this time. And so this is the third case where we have our bottom sticker on the R face once again. Just like before, when we have it on the R face, we're going to place the bottom triple slot in the bottom left right here. And the solution for this case is actually just the inverse of that first algorithm. So we do BL prime again, but now we do a regular hedge and then a BL. And here is the fourth and final case. Now the bottom sticker is actually on the back face like this. Again, our pair is in the back, right? For this one, kind of like before, we want to take our bottom slot and rotate it to be in the very back away from us. 
And again, the solution for this one is the inverse of case number two that I showed earlier. So we do BL this time, and then hedge, and then BL prime. And as you can see, solves it. So those are all the cases for trap triangles that I think these algorithms are really worth using. And as you can see, they're all very easy, just set up move into hedge or inverse hedge. So they're super easy to start implementing and they can definitely save you a lot of time in solves when you get those cases. All right, so now I'd like to take a quick sidestep for a moment and I really wanna blow your mind. So I've gotten the puzzle up to a state where we finished our last two centers and formed our last bottom triple ready to insert. And so what we've really got here is we've got these four remaining triples of pieces to solve. And furthermore, we kind of also have this center in the E slice that's kind of free on this layer too. So now I'm going to go ahead and break out another puzzle, the good old pyramid. For those of you who've read my solution document for the FTO, you'll know that there are certain elements of the geometry that act kind of like a pyramid. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to mix it up just a little bit here. All right, so that should be good. So now what I've got in this state is I kind of have this bottom face here with this edge and this edge solved here. So I kind of have this V done. And now what we have is last four edges on this pyramid, or L4E. Now if we think about the pieces that we have here, the four edges, and then we also have this center, and then look back at the FTO for a second, you might notice something really interesting, and that is that we can actually correlate these groups of pieces on the FTO with the pieces that we have on this pyraminx over here. These four triples that are in these positions are kind of like the pyraminx edges, and then this last E center right here on this layer is kind of like the pyraminx corner. What this means is that the algorithms that we can use to solve this pyraminx here, known as pyraminx L4E, can actually be applied to the FTO in this state right here. Now this seems pretty absurd at first, like Pyraminx L4E algs applying to this really doesn't make much sense, but it can actually be used. Now I'll go ahead and say that I don't actually know Pyraminx L4E, but, oh, I guess I do. But nonetheless, we can actually borrow the algorithms from the L4E alg set and apply them to the FTO here. Now obviously we want to be able to do this in a desirable way, right? This last bottom triple definitely needs to be solved here, right, when we go ahead and finish this step. But by using a certain pyramid self or ELG, we might be able to influence the other three triples in a way that we would like, more specifically the corner pieces of those triples. And after playing around with this for a bit, what Ed and I realized was that we can actually influence the orientation of the last three corners within our last four triples here. And this can actually really improve the cases that we find in the last three triples when we go on to the next step. So it actually turns out this can be pretty useful. And just as a quick example of this working, so for this particular case, if we were to insert this triple the normal way, which is with this form of insertion here, we see that our corners are not oriented at the very end. We have these two that are flipped in the back. But what I'll go ahead and do is apply the algorithm for this particular case. And as you can see, we get our corners oriented. And there's some really helpful ways that this can influence our last three triples for the better. And I will go into these explanations a little bit later, but now let's actually get to all the cases and these algorithms. All right, so here we are. Each of these algorithms will be categorized by how many of the other two corners are twisted and their relative placement. There are a total of four cases for this and six new algorithms are introduced. Here is the first case. We can see that the other two corners here are both oriented correctly relative to our last layer. For the case where we have our last bottom triple oriented this way, the bottom sticker on top like this, we first do an RO rotation to this angle, and then we have this algorithm, and orients our corners. And for this one, where the bottom sticker is facing towards the front like this, we do a UO rotation to hold it from this angle, and then we do this algorithm. And there we go. Here is the next case. We have one of the last two corners twisted here, and it's twisted on the same side as our bottom sticker for our triple, like this. And these are actually the regular insertion algs that we already know. So for this one, we do this, of course. 
And for the other case where it's oriented this way, we do this. Now for the case again where we have one twisted corner, but now it's on the opposite side of where our bottom sticker is for our triple, we do have new algorithms. For the first one, where the bottom sticker is on top, we face it like this, and then we do this sequence. And for the case where we have the bottom sticker on this front face like this, and the twisted corners over here, we do this algorithm. And finally, for the last case where neither of the other two corners are oriented correctly. For this triple orientation, where the bottom sticker is on top, we do this sequence. Effectively, what we just did was a lefty sledge there, and then we rotate to here, and then do the regular insertion. And the other case where the bottom sticker is facing towards the front like this, so we do this sequence. Effectively, what we did is a sledge right there, and then we rotate to this angle, and then do the regular insertion. And that covers all the cases. So now I'd like to really illustrate how this could be really helpful in solves, in the sense that it can avoid a lot of bad cases. So here's one example. We have this triple done now, and we're going to go ahead and insert it into this bottom slot. And if we did it the normal way, ignoring the corner orientation, you can see that we end up with a one flip case here. And this is from the OPF perspective, but it is still one flip, which isn't nice to deal with. Now thinking about this for a minute, the reason that we got one flip here was because our corners are not oriented, right? If we force the corner orientation, then it actually means that we will never get a pure one flip case for the last three triples because it would require the corners to not be oriented. This is exactly what I mean. You can avoid all of the bad cases that arise because of twisted corners by applying these L4E algorithms to orient the corners. So if we go back, seeing that we have two oriented corners over here, and this is our triple orientation, we're gonna go ahead and do the algorithm. And you can see that we get a much nicer case. And we can actually solve this very nicely. Look how much nicer that became. So as a result, we can turn those really bad cases actually into really good ones, which is pretty cool. And this can actually go even further if we think about this more. By orienting our corners, it actually will mean that we are more likely to get a last three triple skip because when you have that, your corners are oriented. So as an example for this case, if we go ahead and insert this triple the normal way, you can see that we end up with pure two flip at the end. So now we have to rotate and we're gonna have to do eight more moves to solve this. But again, if we go back, if we go ahead and force corner orientation, you can see that we actually get a skip. So if you want another reason to give this out to a try, there you go. All right, now I know some of you are probably thinking that this actually could lead us into an issue. And I will address the elephant in the room, which is that these algorithms can actually also avoid good cases, which is not so great. So here, if we do the algorithm to orient our corners, you can see that we end up with this case, and now we have to solve it from here and do a few more flips. Whereas going back, if we just insert it the regular way, you can actually we see if we have one move to pair formation and then one flip to finish. So the ultimate takeaway from this is that these algorithms do have a lot of potential. However, I feel like they should only be used in some situations and not all of them. I think once last four triples recognition starts to develop a bit more in solving, then these algorithms may become more useful and more applicable. Naively using them could lead into bad cases like that one. And I must also admit that I have not been able to experiment with these algorithms much in solves to really see if they're really beneficial, but I am putting it out there just for the future in case this becomes the new meta. Overall, I highly recommend learning the trap triangle cases, but as for the corner orientation algorithms, that's really up to you. So that's about it. I really do apologize for not getting this video out sooner, but I really wanted to be sure and provide the best algorithms that I have at the moment and be able to provide the best explanations. That's it for this video. Be sure to check out the others through the playlist link in the description.